Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Unnamed here, and today I'm bringing you a video on my Corvette class ship, the Falcon. Let's start off in the cockpit, shall we? Here we have the captain's chair, an azimuth design, and here we have the ship itself. A very nice little design, well protected, very well detailed for uh, its size of course. Solar panels, connector, turrets, including this cannon turret on the very top, which is very powerful. We also have three mounted rail guns forward facing with a camera to help guide it. As you can see, let's go ahead and swap to it and take it a little test fire. It's very powerful. We have three rocket pods, or not three, two rocket pods. Not the most powerful, but pretty good for close range engagements. And of course, we have our cannon turret right here. Mounted in such a way that you can't accidentally shoot yourself off the bridge. And uh, I like this thing, but the sound is a little weird. Let's go ahead and listen to that. just sounds like a gunshot. Now inside the cockpit here we've got two of these forward-facing instrument panels for various functions in the ship. We have the uh, I think it's extended LCDs. I can't remember the uh, name of the guy who uh, made this but it's a very very useful script. I recommend that uh, everyone go use it. It's very good and pretty easy to set up. We've got two more stations down here. Oop, get back up. Where uh, two more people would sit, managing inventory, maybe manning two of the uh, turrets up on the top here. We've got a station for your suit. We've got a small medical station. Oxygen in each part of the ship. Two jump drives six cryopods and if I can get myself up here plenty of oxygen storage and a shield generator now this is a pretty light ship it doesn't have any heavy armor so it's going to need a little bit of extra protection and with that shield generator it has all the protection it needs it can easily stand up to some of the most punishing blows that this game has to offer. I haven't tested it crashing onto a planet, but you know, it, it should hold up pretty well. We have four hydrogen generators. Probably only needs two, but I like having a little bit of extra fuel. Back here, we have our batteries and reactors that are powering the ship. And I just really love how compact everything is in here. As you can see, there's a little bit of space back here where I could potentially put a few more things if I wanted to get rid of these, uh, oops, if I wanted to get rid of these extra hydrogen tanks. But like I said, I like having the extra fuel, and at the moment, the only thing keeping this ship moving around is the hydrogen. And if you're going to be flying around on planets, getting on and off in atmosphere, you're going to need all the fuel you can get. Now, let's go ahead, take this thing for a little spin, shall we? Now, right off, it accelerates very fast. And, ooh. A little bit of buggery going on there. This is a very maneuverable ship. Capable of laying down some pretty heavy fire. And able to jump quite a decent distance. This is probably one of the longest range ships I have in my uh, fleet right now. 
As I said, I named it the Falcon because with its little wings here, it does look fairly similar to a bird of prey. And with Keen's uh, inverse kinematics, you're able to walk around on the ship as everything flies by and just explore and walk around and do everything you need to do on this ship whether it's build, repair, do whatever you need to do. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and give it a little target just to demonstrate some of the firepower this thing is capable of. Let's go ahead and bring this ship to a complete stop before I put anything out here. Because while I'm able to get up and move around and all that, I don't want to be getting out and doing anything while it's still moving. It's a good way to lose a ship. This is the only entrance and exit, so... Not exactly a very good way of getting on and off the ship, but with how fairly thin it is, I mean, look at it, it's a very slim profile for what it is. You know, it's pretty much the only way I could fit a way in and out. Like I said, I could get rid of the hydrogen engines, or not engines, tanks, up in the uh, front here and probably slim it out at a entrance and exit right there but really nah I, I like it the way it is okay so uh oh a little bit of a problem here but that's fine don't exactly have an internet connection right now it's been really weird let's go ahead and oh I need something to shoot at what about... yeah. Heavy armor target. Let's go ahead and put this... Eh, a reasonable distance away. Not too far, not too close. I think... about there is good. About 300 meters out. Let's show you the kind of power that these railguns are packing. Just kind of depressurized everything here. Oh well. Alright. There we go. 400 meters. Now, first off, these rocket pods. Pretty powerful. They're able to do some damage, do some work cannon here also very powerful also able to do a decent amount of work not that effective against heavy armor though able to pinpoint and take off turrets and engines and just cause a lot of damage but it has a fairly slow rate of fire let's go ahead and try and take this thing apart with the rail guns now, if I'm right about my own ship, the bridge should be right about there. Now, the railguns have a very slow reloading speed. And, unfortunately, not a whole lot I can do about that. But, let's go ahead and take a look and see what kind of damage that short little volley did to my destroyer. As you can see, I've done quite a bit of damage, fairly considerable. Scratch the paint down here, and I've completely breached the bridge, taken out two command consoles, just tore up the insides here just with the one shot from the railgun, punched clean through the ship doing that. That is devastating. Now, imagine if I had aimed maybe a little bit lower and maybe a little bit to the right here I would have taken out 
everything. This ship would no longer have a cockpit. And of course with the uh, cannon, well, I scratched the paint in the heavy armor. The cannon doesn't really do very well against heavy armor, like I said, but it is still a fairly devastating weapon. And while this ship is not... Oh, where is it? <laughs> I lost my ship. There it is. While this ship isn't exactly a frontline fighting kind of ship, it does extremely well for patrolling and making sure that the uh, area around the UNI territory is safe. And, like I said, with the shield mod, it can hold up to quite a decent amount of punishment. Now you can see the decals popping up here, as if I'm actually doing damage to the blocks. The shield mod prevents any kind of damage from actually being done to the block. Let's go ahead and unload on that for a little bit. And as you can see, no damage has been done at all. So yes, a very lightweight ship, but it's well defended and packs a serious punch. It's got a connector up here for refueling purposes. And it's very, very efficient. It's not a very heavy ship. It's very maneuverable able to enter and leave planetary atmosphere and environments. It's an all-around really good ship. It's also fairly inexpensive to build. So that's also a really, really good thing, and you don't even need these mods. Like, you could just put regular cockpits in here. You don't need these cannons. You don't need the railguns, and it would still be an effective ship. Now. The Gatling turrets, I've got them placed really close here, that's because I'm using a mod that fixes the turret placement where instead of it being a 3x3 three three block, it would be a 1x3, one 1x2, let's see, 1, 2, 3, yeah, a 1x3 three block kind of fixes the hitbox for that. So that's another mod I would really recommend the... Um, turret placement mod. It allows you to put a little bit more firepower on your ship and have it be a little bit more logical. Like if I wanted to, I could probably sink these into the ship here so this base is more protected. And that way only the gun bits are sticking out. And that way it's a much harder target to hit for people trying to fly by and do a little bit of damage. Now these wings aren't just for show. As you can see, if you try to get a broadside on this ship, you're either going to have to shoot for the very front and a little bit towards the back, but all the major components that are absolutely vital to this ship's operation, they're actually kind of tucked away behind all this light armor, and you're not going to be able to bust through all of that in just one shot. And it's also got these, um, what is it, I can't think of the name, blast door blocks, her her, there we go, blast door blocks kind of protecting certain sections of the ship as well. So yeah, the, like I said, a very lightweight, very effective Corvette class ship. It's not exactly a bruiser, it's not exactly meant for high speed combat or anything like that, it's more of a patrol boat and light skirmish ship. But in any engagement, two or three of these backing up my Artemis battleship there, if you can see it, yay, it's right about there. Two or three of these backing that up, along with my carrier and all of the fighters, and you've got yourself a pretty formidable armada. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.